Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, let's stand for prayer, please. Joe, would you open us up in prayer, please? Good morning. Father, we thank you so much this morning, Lord. Have by just to wake up again, Lord, and have a breath of air, Lord, that we could walk and talk and jump, go into God and smile with each other. Father, we give you the glory this morning. You're worthy, Almighty God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're so worthy, my Lord. We don't even know where to begin this morning. But let your Holy Spirit flow in our lives. Father, we want to thank all these men of God that are here in this campus, Father, have been here. How blessed are we with their presence and your presence, my Lord, in the Word of Truth. We thank you for this morning. We thank you, Pastor, going forward. Bring this word. We thank you for Pastor Ledger coming in. Be our worship leader this morning. We're looking to adore you. Bring in the Holy Spirit, Lord. We please it unto you and sing and shout in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make God glad that you're a man this morning, Lord. Father, receive the word. Oh, Lord, if you have something to think about today, where we are with you, Lord, we can stand. Look at you, Father. Hold on to you, knowing that you will never lose our Savior, my God. We pray for our families that have left there and those that are here today, but the ones that are on the outside of the fold, Lord, that they won't lose their hope, they won't lose their faith, my God. They won't lose their way, Lord. That the four, the four miles rescue mission still is the tabernacle of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The doors are open always, the arms are open always for welcoming those who want to come, receive, Lord, and be filled by your presence. We thank you, Almighty God, because you do things exceedingly and wonderfully abundantly, Lord, that we could never imagine, my Father. And touch those today, the world, the outside world, Lord. Those that one time have heard your word and straight away. Those that one time, Almighty God, said things about you that weren't true and have no understanding and no clarity in their heart, but just anger and brokenness, heart, hurt, and darkness, Lord. Now we pray for that light, your admirable, beautiful light, Lord. To bring it from the darkness to the presence of the holy God, of a loving God, of a true God, of a faithful God. Lord, to touch those families today that are going through a hard time and broken, Lord. And it's dismay and destruction, amen, happy, and disaster, Lord, that your word will calm the seas and calm the waters now, Almighty God, in their lives. And they have a place to come to your word, Father, your Bible, which is true, Lord. Father, I'm touching each and every one of our men of our development sphere, Lord, and our government that, Father, I'm not going to do good. And do one of the good of conspiring, Lord, to betray you and betray us again, Lord. And you put a stop to that, Almighty God. That they will understand this is a, a, a country built on the principles of the Lord. And we need to do good so our people can be good. We need to come together and pray together and do good before you, my Lord. In your mercy, they will come before you humbly, Lord, and search you out with a true heart. Lord, that you will hear our prayers. That you will come down, Father, and, and bless our heart. And bless our land, Father, that they all be well within our soul, because we know we're doing good for you, my Lord, and only you. And we thank you this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Reverend Ledger is going to come sing, uh, lead us in a couple of songs. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Um, just one quick announcement. Uh, if you have a car on the property, I strongly recommend that you lock it when you are here. May a word to the wise be sufficient. Okay. Um, Osborne, Slight, where are you? Okay, well, uh, brother and sister Black are having their anniversary tomorrow, their 41st, so if they would stand together, we'll sing for them. Yeah. Happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. All right. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's sing 578, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. 578.
Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures, lead us. For our use, thy faults prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. from brother and sister black this morning praise the lord let's turn to number 33 how great thou art Absolutely. number 
that was really nice. That was, everyone was loud and the piano was exceptional. That was really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. It's a good song. Anyone have any prayer requests? Or Joe? Praise God, how truly, how great God is. I've been seeing so much improvement within the church here these past couple of months just keep getting better and better inch by inch and it's creating a beautiful safe haven for so many people and it's letting people be able to express themselves in God and be comfortable with that fact that God exists and God is there for you and you can see it if you pay attention you can see it and love it and enjoy it and I pray for those people that are making Mark?
believe he helped you say that because I could actually hear you this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Miss Foster. I'm glad you're here, too. We're glad you're here. Yes, Stephen? For unsaved loved ones and a special unspoken. Okay. Steve? Last time I spoke, I, I said I'd stay here tonight. Nine months today is my ninth month. I got four things done. I've got all my taxes done for 18, 17, 18, 19, and 20. I got my driver's license back. Good. I haven't had for 21 years. Amen. So then I quit drinking and smoking after nine months. Amen. 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 Pray for Reverend Wooten bringing the message today. Uh, say a prayer for little Rajay back there and all the all the people that are in his life that are going to be be helping with, with him growing up and becoming a, a fine young man. I'm sure of it. Amen. Will. Anybody else want prayer? Yeah, let's stand for prayer. <laughs> Greg, would you do the honors, please?
Praise the Father. Your word says that. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, Father, even though he doesn't know what's coming, Lord. And Peter's saying, I believe the report of the Lord that he's going to get this job, Father. Mm -hmm. And when he gets on this job, he's going to tell somebody about it, Jesus. Yes. Give you all glory, honor, and praise, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Now have the ushers, please. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here together on this beautiful Sunday morning to worship in your name. Please bless this, this offering and bless everyone that, that's giving and, and those that can give. Those that can't give, please bless them. Dear Lord, just, we just want to thank you for everything. We want to thank you for everything that you've done for us. Yes, and, Lord. and remember that, that the, the new stimulus that is coming out, that we hope that everyone that receives a little bit will remember you and, you, and remember to give back <coughs> just a little bit. Yes, Lord. And pray that Reverend Wooten, you do with him this morning as he brings our message and that we all, all take, take exactly what you want us to get out of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I could sit here and listen to the rest of that one. <laughs> All right, Reverend Ledger's going to bring us with another song. Amen. Let's turn in our hymnals to 105. 105. Day by day. five in your hymnal.
time for open our ears and hearts and listen and see what Reverend Wooten has from us from the Lord today. Reverend Wooten. In the midnight hour, time got away from us and we lost one. <laughs> now myself, I would like to be able to find it back, especially looking at some of you this morning. You look like you're still searching for it, but um, we appreciate it. Everybody is conscious of time, everybody. Yes. Even Adam and Eve were, because they knew in the cool of the evening that was a time set that God would come and visit with them. And they knew that. They were conscious of that time frame. So we are all are conscious of time somehow, some way. Well, that's not my message this morning. But uh, this morning, I, I want us to look at John chapter 8. <clears throat> St. John chapter 8. And we'll begin reading in verse 31. <clears throat> John chapter 8. Sorry. He's telling me to get this thing on. Is it on now? All right, good. Chapter 8 of St. John. we we'll start reading in verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, Ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. Lord, we thank you again this morning for the reading of your word. We ask you to take it and to use it. Help us, dear Lord, as we try our best to expound upon it, that we might be able to help our men, dear Father, we ask. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Over in Romans chapter 6, we find that Paul wrote these words beginning in verse 16 down through the end of that chapter, verses 23. If you want to follow along, Romans chapter 6, verse 16 through verse 23. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey. Yes whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free in sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free in righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free in sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, thank you again for the word. We pray that thou shalt help us again in thy name. Amen. Now, there were two mistakes that I read in this passive scripture. And if you were following along, you would have seen real quickly and uh, maybe. Sometimes in churches, people sit back there and they are in la-la land and have no clue, no idea if the preacher's reading it right or not. And I made two mistakes on purpose to see if anybody caught the mistakes. Did anybody? Just one. What were they, Henry? What's that? That's exactly right. In verse 18, 
being then made free in sin is what I said. But the scripture says this, being then made free from sin. And verse 22, but now being made free in sin, I said. And the Bible said, being now me, being made free from sin. From sin. There's a vast difference between in and from. In and from. But today's people's theology and preachers' teachings are in, not from. And that's why our teaching and our preaching when people come to us is so strange. Because we preach and teach that you can live above sin. You can be free from sin. You don't have to carry it around. You don't have to have it like a load on your back. But you can be free from sin. But the theology of the world today is that you still are a sinner. You're still carrying that load. You're still who you are. And all you can do is hope for the best that maybe somewhere God will look at your good and your bad and weigh them and let you be able to hopefully get into heaven because you've been good enough and not bad enough. Well, we see here in this passage of scripture that it goes along with what I read to you over in John Chapter 8. He says, Knowing you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants. This word servant means a bond servant. He's there because he owes a debt. That's the reason why it says bond servant. He's there because he owes a debt. It's not because he was caught in war. It's not because somebody went and invaded his land or his tribe or his home and brought him and made him a slave. But he was a bond servant. He was someone that had reached out too far and got himself so deep in debt he could not pay the creditors. He could not pay what he owed. And as a result, the law in that era would take them and put them under a bond servant. And they would become a bond servant to their creditor. Aren't you thankful we don't do that today? But he said, you're a servant. You yield yourself servants to obey. You don't have any choice. You have to obey as a bond servant. You do what the master tells you. You follow his instructions. You follow his guide. You're there because you put yourself in that situation Amen. by overextending yourself. <laughs> you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now, it gives you a choice here, Paul does. He said, you're a bond servant so that you can obey, and you're either going to obey the sin that you're doing unto death, or you're going to obey the obedience unto righteousness. God can help you to come to that place of either one. And God wants us, Paul wants us to understand here that we are bond servants, you and I. We have overextended ourselves into a sinful life. We've committed sin. We've become a bond servant. We have no way to be able to get out. We can't get out on our own. We don't have the ability to be able to reach out and to pull ourselves out of the quagmire of sin that we've got ourselves into. And so we have to have a master to come along and to help us. And whether we're under sin or whether we're under righteousness, we are bond servants. You never get away from the thought, and I want you to hear this this morning, you never get away from the thought that you're ever going to be free of being a bond servant. You're going to be a bond servant to sin because sin is the debt that we have and that we cannot pay. Or we will be a bond servant unto Jesus Christ because of the debt he paid for us that we could not pay. Amen. Praise Amen. God forever. Amen. And that's why Paul said, His servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Amen. But God be thanked. God be thanked. Paul always tries to give us an admonition that whatever circumstance you're in, you can thank God. You can ask the Lord to help you. But he said, God be thanked that ye were. 
Now that goes against the theology of the preaching today as well. Because when you look at the scripture being made free in sin, then it has to be that you are, not were. And so you see here this morning that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. You've done what God's asked you to do. And so therefore, you sinful, perverted individual is now a redeemed, justified Individual, praise God, serving him. And so we see, he says in verse 18, let me go back just just for a minute. I I guess I need to give you here the definition of what sin is in verse 16, and it's the same throughout the rest of this chapter so that you'll be able to understand it. This word here is the Greek word means for us, the sin of commission and omission in thought, word, and deed. The sin of commission and omission in thought, word. Now, that covers a whole lot. The things you do and the things you should have done. And so you think of that when you read the word sin in the rest of this chapter here, that this word is talking about a sin of commission and omission in thought, word, and deed. But God be thanked. Let's go on back down now. Verse 18. Being then made free from sin. And that, as I said earlier, the theology of today teaches us that we are still in sin. We're bound by it. You can't do anything about it. All you can do is pray and ask God to forgive you every time. But that's not what Paul declared to us. That's not what Paul said here. We find the word from is used of deliverance or passing away from any state or condition. The word is Epo, the Greek word, and it means to be used uh, of deliverance or passing away from any state or condition, the word from is. And you can draw a huge circle this morning, and if I'm in sin, I'm in the middle of the circle or somewhere in it. If I'm from sin, then I'm outside the circle over here because I'm no longer part of it. I'm no longer in it. I'm no longer doing it. I'm no longer struggling with it. But I have freedom in Jesus Christ. And so we find here that Paul said, being then made free from sin. Now, why did he tell them that they were made free from sin? Because in verse 17 he said, that ye were the servants of sin. You were. And now you're made free from sin. Jesus said that truth shall make you free. Isn't that what I read in the beginning? The truth shall make you free. And if the Son hath made you free, you're free just sometimes. Just part of the time. Just when you feel like it. Just when you go to church. No. He said when you're free, you're free. You're free indeed. He said being made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. Righteousness. Right living. We find That Paul says, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. He's talking about here your human nature. He says here, for as ye have yielded your members, servants, to righteous uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. We find here that this is talking about the human nature of us. He takes it and he thwarts it. He distorts Our human nature creates somebody who uses our members to go out and to follow the enemy of our soul and give ourselves over to iniquity, unto iniquity, and to uncleanness. 
The word uncleanness here means for us to know God. That when you know God, it results, excuse me, when you cease to know God, I'll get this out here in a minute, when you cease to know God, it results in idolatry, and the idolatry under fulfillment of the flesh of the Spirit. You find you go from step to step to step, and that's what Paul said. You go from uncleanness to iniquity, which is the lowest of low. The iniquity unto iniquity, even so. Now yield your members servants to righteousness. And this word righteousness here means to justify. The justified experience. He talks about the legal aspect here of God forgiving you and claiming you that you are now free from sin. Not in sin, but free from sin. Praise God forever unto holiness. And this word holiness here, if you look over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, and if you just want to listen to me real carefully, maybe you know it enough that you can follow along with it. it says, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. The word sanctification there is the same as holiness here in this particular verse. Wow. He says you have come to a place of yielding your members' servants to being justified unto holiness, to being sanctified. That should help us this morning to understand that God wants us to live lives that are pleasing to him, that are holy. To live lives that are truly holy. And how can we live holy when we're in sin? And if you profess to be a Christian and you sin, you're not holy. Unless you repent of that sin. That's a pretty deep, isn't it? And I don't want to get so deep that you don't understand. I don't want to get so deep that it goes over your head. I don't want to get so deep that you just throw it all to the wind. But I do want to help you this morning to understand that God wants us to have a clean heart, a pure heart. He wants us to live above sin. He wants us to be free from sin. He wants us to be able to say, I was a servant of sin, but no longer, no longer. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from sin. Righteousness, justification, you weren't justified. So that, that right there just slams people in the face real good when they stand up and testify or when they pretend like there's something when they know they have sin on the inside. Are you listening? Are you listening? If you still have sin, friends, you can't be a Christian if you have sin in your heart and in your life. Huh? If you use words that are not right, if you do actions that are ungodly, if you have thoughts that you're fantasizing with and you're playing with and you're letting that lust there become an action in that action, then it's going to bring forth death upon you, friend. There's going to be a lot of folks in today's world that's going to stand before the judgment bar of God. And wonder, and wonder why that when he opened the books, they weren't found there. Well, I went to Sunday school when I didn't have to. I visited prayer meeting when I didn't have to. I went to church. They made me, but I still went to church. I put my dime in the offering plate. I did real good, Lord. The church world, I taught Sunday school, I was on the board, I played the piano, I sang in the choir, I helped lead prayer meeting once in a while when the preacher wasn't there. I did lots of things. But what's he say to us? I'm sorry. I never knew you. Why does he say that? Does he say it because he doesn't like you? Does he say it because he thinks we're ugly? Does he 
Does he say it to us because he's prejudiced against us for a reason or another? We don't know. No, 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 friends. He says it because you're still living in sin. And yet you want to try to pull your religious state over into that place and make it work for God. But God sees us, you see. The preachers don't always see you. The evangelist doesn't always see you. The Christians in the church don't always see you. The board doesn't always see you. The people don't always know what you're doing. But let me tell you something, God does. God does. He knows what some of you think. He knows what goes on in your hearts. He knows what's happening with you, friends. And let me tell you something. He is not going to be satisfied unless you have become a servant to righteousness unto holiness, justification to sanctification. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? What kind of fruit developed of the things that you did? You know, sometimes we get the, the fatal impression that when we come to the Lord and we ask him to help us, that God should reach down and wipe away all the consequences of our sins that we did. We have that mistaken idea that God's going to come in because he forgives us our sin. He's going to wipe away the consequences of it as well. And that's not true. Sometimes we go through the consequences of our sins. And when we do, friends, when we do, it's not for us to raise our fists and say, why did you help me? God didn't put you there. You did it of your own free will. But now being made free from sin, he said. From, 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 not in. Not in. And become servants to God. You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You are now going to have the opportunity to be able to do good and to have the good follow after you and to have some consequences of good that's going to be there. Why? Because you've lived for Jesus. Because you've striven for holiness. Because you've tried your best to live a holy life in an unholy world among an unholy people. And we see here he says, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You haven't gained everlasting life yet. You've been promised it, but you don't have it yet. Now, a lot of people are going to disagree with me, and that's okay you disagree with me. But that's a conditional thing. On the condition you stay saved, you have everlasting life. If you don't say, say saved, then friend, let me tell you, you're not going to have it. Because you have to be free from not in sins. Praise God forever. That's good preaching, even if I did do it. <laughs> and we got two, two wonderful preachers here, that, and they preach a house of fire, and they preach well. But let me tell you something, friends. It doesn't change the word right here, that you have your fruit and the holiness and the end everlasting life but then he also tacks on this last verse for the wages of sin is death oh what an awful thought death should really speak to us this week since we lost one of our men that should help reach us and teach us and talk to us about our immorality I mean our immortality yeah that too our immortality But friends, we're not going to live forever. You're not going to live forever. You might think you're going to. I hoped I lived to be an old man someday. That's what I want to be, an old man. And I trust when I get old, I'm still sweet. But I'm still brazen. Because I just tell you what it is. My friends... Some of you here this morning are not going to heaven. Some of you are not going to heaven. 
You say, preacher, you make a prediction. Yes, I am. Out of the four soils, only one. Out of the ten virgins, only five. Friends, we look at that. We see this morning. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Life in all its manifestations. What a wonderful thing. We find here that he gives us this life in all of its manifestations, and it's an eternal life, an endless age, the Greek word says. An endless age. Not an endless world, but an endless age. And friends, it'll be so wonderful to be there. It'll be so grand. I was been reading the book of Revelation and filled, finished it up yesterday. And I thought to myself, oh, won't it be wonderful to go over to the river of life and to be able to see the trees that lines it, that yields 12 manner of fruits every month. Wouldn't it be wonderful? And, and to know that there's no light bulbs, no kerosene heat lighters, and, and, and no candles of any kind that you have to have because Jesus Christ is the light thereof. And the temple, hallelujah, and the, everything there will be holy, harmless, and undefiled, praise God for her. Let me tell you something, friends. Not all of us this morning are going to heaven. Some of you are going to miss it. Some of you are going to miss it because it's right here. You still have wages of death that have not been given to Jesus Christ. And you're going to find yourself out there. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, this morning, now you can sit and you can do without. And you can revile and rebuke and speak against God all you desire. But there comes a time. There comes a time, friends. There comes a time. Now this morning, I'm going to ask you to stand. Will you come and play just as I am for me, David? A couple of verses, please, sir. And if you have a need, friends... If you know that things are not right in your heart, don't play around with, with it. Don't play around with God. You have unconfessed sin. If you still are in, in sin and not from sin, you need to be here seeking God. You need to come and ask Him to reach down and to speak to your heart, lest you be one of those that miss the way. Play, brother, if you've got it. Come on, the altar's open for you. It's open for you, friend. Just as I am, I'm bringing my sins and I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for peace. I'm asking for hope. I'm asking for help. I'm asking that God would give me everything I need to be able to make it to heaven. What about you, friend? What about you this morning? Don't waste the opportunity because in hell you'll see the same opportunities again and again and again and again. You'll have an eternity to look back on the opportunities that you had. You'll have an eternity to look back on the opportunities you had. The Bible tells us there will be a day and time coming when men will cry out for the rocks and the hills to fall on them. Why? To hide them from God. In hell, in hell, I believe part of the torment is you'll know God You'll know what he could have done, and you refused it. Come on, friends. Here's an altar. Come on, here's two. Will you join them? Play it again, brother.
Don't waste your time. Don't worry about what your neighbor thinks because those out there in the smoke pit have already got their minds made up. Just kneel down there, son, right here again. Amen. That's right. Come on. Come on down, kneel at the altar. Let's seek God. Come on, friends. Where are you this morning? If there's a question mark, God can erase the question mark. God can erase the question mark and give you assurance that all is well. Who will? Come on. Come on. Finish up, brother. I hope you're not one that's dug your heels in. But if you are, those marks will be shown to you. Those marks will be shown to you. You had an opportunity, but you dug your heels in instead against the truth of God. Finish it up, brother. You know how to pray with these folks. Gather in. Let's pray with them for a little bit. Father, we pray this morning for thy divine help. We ask you to reach down and to touch and to guide. And Lord, we pray those that didn't come that needed to be here. Lord, I pray you would weary their hearts with the truth. Lord, just we pray, let convicting power make every sin that they commit unbearable, unendurable, and non-pleasurable, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go quietly, please.